Hey, it's Brad Stats with Security All Star, and I'm here with Aaron Spradlin from Michael Sword. Um, trying to figure out how long I've known you. Three to four years, maybe? Yeah, about three and a half. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were introduced through some mutual friends uh, through a briefing on uh, counterterrorism here in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We don't have terrorists here in Tennessee, so no. that was that was just kind of all silliness, right? It was just fiction. Just fiction. Right. Yeah. With lots of evidence to support. Is there really evidence out there? There's a little bit. You gotta share with yeah. us. So someday I will. Someday? Right. Okay. Um, so Aaron and I have known each other for about four years, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the relationship uh, has grown. Uh, you have another organization that you do some work with now, mm -hmm. and um, we're here today to talk a little bit about about both of those. Uh, right. Tell me, tell me uh, if, if you will, um, what Michael Sword does. What, the, what, does the, the, what does the organization do? Okay, the best way to describe it is um, you got a pretty good handful of guys with special skills. So you're talking gentlemen that come out of the special operations community, uh, former law enforcement at the SWAT level, um, some Navy SEALs, a couple other um, gentlemen that worked in high level law enforcement as in federal at ATF. Right. Um, we have, uh, I got a couple fellows that have spent some time with the CIA. So we've got a lot of really good intelligence gatherers and what we do is we focus on gathering the intelligence, following the leads, and building the packages for law enforcement to take down uh, the child sex trafficking crimes, um, or the, the, excuse me, the child sex trafficking trade that takes place in the United States. Now, that is our m main focus of Michael Seward, is the United States. There are a multitude of organizations that are out there all over the world that come out of the United States that are rescuing every day. Now, you, you introduced me, I'm, I'm back up, sorry, you introduced sorry. me to Dr. Dr. Rigor Wark, and um, uh, I, I did not understand how all of the organizations fit together, but mm -hmm. when you and I first started discussing human trafficking, mm -hmm. um, I was just ignorant. And I, I do think that most people uh, are ignorant of just how deep, how far, how wide, and, and I know there's a lot of this, there's some ongoing operations, there's some things that you really don't want to disclose and can't, but if you will, for the average American who's more interest, interested in Super Bowl and uh, Dancing with the Stars, who really, who really does not realize this is an issue, share what you can to enlighten them. Sure. Just so they know. Well, I'm glad you, you targeted, or you, you keyed word the Super Bowl. Okay, let's just talk about the Super Bowl for a minute. Um, yeah, we all tune in, we have parties, everybody comes over to the house, we've got our, our chips and our dip and our, our beverages, and everybody's there to watch the big game. But right. uh, sadly, in the United States, the number one day for sex trafficking in the United States is the Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? No, they come in from all over to see the Super Bowl. So what you see is um, target-rich environment because you have multiple types of personalities that are going to be there and guess what they have? They have money. And they're away from their normal life. They're in Vegas or they're, they're in Minnesota or wherever they are to see this game. And the traffickers target those regions. So they'll load up the kids in a van or a bus and they'll bring them into the region and then they'll start blasting them all over the dark side of social media. And they'll advertise them plain as day right there. And these guys will go out and find what they're looking for. They'll make the call, they'll make the request, and the deal will go down. Now, now, so, so this is what's shocking to me. And, and, and if you will, share the average age and share how many children. We're not talking about a small number. This is a massive number. Share with the people that are getting this information what those two things look like. Okay, um, the average age, 13, is a good number. Uh, it fluctuates yearly. Sometimes that 13 will be 15 because now that 13 year old is 15 years old and she's been a good earner. I mean, I hate to put it like that, but that's, that's what this is. This is, um, this is a business that is so well structured that they have their, their, their shipping, they have their distribution, and they have their final product, and then they bring in new product. And we're literally talking about that established all over the United States. All over the United States, but since we're here, let's talk about Tennessee. Okay. All right, well, let me go back for a minute. 14,500 to 15,500 children that are trafficked in the United States are um, foreign nationals, okay? 14,500, 15,500. In the U.S., there's probably 250 to 350,000 of those children that are U.S. children. 
Okay, so we're not bringing in as we think of, oh, this is somebody else's problem. And you'll find that, um, that you see it's happening in Haiti and it's happening in South America and it happens in the middle of, uh, of Europe and it happens in um, Thailand, Asia, um, Australia. It's everywhere. Um, but that's their problem. Yeah. Okay, those kids, yeah, they're kids, but it's not our problem. When you have, uh, um, this stuff is going on right here in the United States and, and right here in Tennessee, um, pretty predominantly. I mean, three, three hours down the road, Atlanta, number one place in the country for child sex trafficking. Okay, big city, big market, all right? And they run rotation, all right? Those kids in Atlanta may not be in Atlanta the whole time. They may end up in Birmingham, and then they may end up in Memphis, and then they may end up in Nashville and Knoxville, and they rotate, okay? Um, the, the numbers are staggering, but the reason is because nobody's putting focus on it in the United States because they're watching Dancing with the Stars and they're watching the Super Bowl and that's somebody else's problem. Well, they don't have water or food now. It's somebody else's problem until it happens until to it hits kid. You. Yeah. You, it hits your family, it hits your your kid. We had... Uh, we hey, had and, and you're dad. I'm a dad, yeah. I have a 15-year-old son mm -hmm. and he has been aware of this problem probably as long as he's been alive, but it was in a different way. Now, I, I gotta be honest with you, I have, I have four children mm -hmm. and when I first started hearing about this, uh, I realized just how loose I had been with my kids at the mall, mm -hmm. running around. Like the other night, we were at a hotel out of town, and uh, I didn't let them stay outside and throw snowballs. Mm -hmm. I stood outside packing heat because um, I was in what is considered kind of a dangerous city in the U.S. And uh, my whole awareness of that has changed. Mm -hmm. And and I I don't know how we get the awareness to the people who have the ability to assist and help. Um, but you know the, who some of those organizations are. If, if, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your involvement with Centurion Alliance and, and how we can get money and awareness and websites and those types of things to people. Due to the rules that are out there for the 501c3 world, which is the nonprofit world, which Centurion Alliance, who is the group that helps us run our operations, the rules are if I'm a 501c3 and a nonprofit, I'm full disclosure. You can go to the web and you can find everything in the world out about me. You can find out about my guys that are on the ground doing the work. So in order to do that, Centurion Alliance is our 501c3. It's our fundraising. It's our information. It's what we get out there. Then Michael Sword, which is our organization, is the operational arm of what we do, which includes the investigation, working hand-in-hand -hand with law enforcement um, to not only collect the evidence through an investigative way as a legal investigative yes. unit in the state of Tennessee, but also um, uh, recording hard evidence that you build the packet for. So now their job is a little easier. And the reason that we even exist is because of the limitations on resources. Okay, in the state of Tennessee alone, we have four agents that are devoted to child sex trafficking at the high, highest level of law enforcement that we have here. And they're, they're regional. So Memphis, Central, which is us, right. East is Knoxville, and the Chattanooga Southern region. You have four of those. And that's not just trafficking for children, that's trafficking as a whole. They're the human trafficking division of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Four people. So they need help. Right? right? Our job is not to get in their way. Our job is not to um, step outside of the lines of what we're allowed to do as a private investigative unit. Our job is to collect the evidence that we can, hand it over to the law enforcement entity so that they can go in, put their surveillance packages on it, and take down the bad guys. Now, four? Four. I'm, I, I, I did not know this until right now. So, four people mm -hmm. for this issue. For the entire state. For the entire state. Yes, sir. And there's how many thousands of children in the United States annually that, that you know you gave me some worldwide numbers earlier but you know how many in the u.s um no three hundred and fifty thousand in the u.s three hundred fifty thousand three hundred fifty thousand four children. people in tennessee in alone let's, let's let's look at the statistic real quick um in tennessee alone we have uh 100 open cases in four counties and there's child sex trafficking in 78 of 95 or 78 of 95 counties in the state of Tennessee, according to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation Statistics. Wow. 78 counties out of 95 have child sex trafficking in the state of Tennessee. The buckle on the Bible Belt. Okay, if you're watching this, there is something that you can do to start helping. Now, if you watched it, you are aware. Um, one way to get money to this organization. Uh, and to help is to go to Centurion Alliance, um, and it is centurionalliance.com.org. Dot, dot what is it? Centurion Alliance? Dot org. Dot org. Mm -hmm. Okay, centurionalliance.org. 
Um, you can donate there. Uh, we, we're having some programs we're going to announce shortly through our company, Security All Star, where people will be able to donate some items there, which will be very helpful in, in the fight not only for raising money for all, but also some equipment. Um, you know, we can't stick our head in the sand and say we're going to be ignorant forever. Um, this is probably one of the reasons I'm working 14 hours a day right now. I think you're, you're probably working more hours than I am. I'm right there with you. We're, we're going to talk some more, uh, but um, this is, it, 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 is it Father Ford breaks my heart. This Thank is, you. This is, uh, this is something people can't bury their head in the sand any, any, any more about. Aaron, right. thanks for being here. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. We'll talk again really soon. Okay. Right. Thank you. Take care.